Hi, I'm David Abrams, and today we're going to talk about using Calman to calibrate the Small HD OLED 22. Now, while we're calibrating the Small HD OLED 22, it's important to note that many of the processes and procedures we're following here today will work with any Small HD monitor running PageOS 5.4 or higher. Let's get started. First, go to your Calman. In the top left hand corner, go to Calman, come down to Open Workflow Template, go to Display Specific, and navigate down to Small HD AutoCal. Here, we're greeted with a welcome screen and some instructions on how to get started. Let's choose the OLED type from the display type as that's what we're working with today. OLED. You'll notice on the right hand side it says OLED default settings window size 10%. The workflow is recommending that we set our test pattern generator to 10%. Now I'm using the SpectraCal VideoForge Pro with a Blackmagic Ultra Studio 4K Mini for the test pattern you see here. But it's important to note that we also support the internal test pattern generator on the small HD. We'll most likely perform our calibration today using that internal generator, but we'll also do validations with the external pattern generator. Let's hit next. Next, we're on our session setup page. And the first step is to find our meter. Today, we're going to use the Color Mature Research CR300 and the CR100. The CR300 being a spectroradiometer that we'll use to profile the CR100 colorimeter for the utmost in accuracy. It's important to note that Calman supports many colorimeters and spectroradiometers, and you're able to use any of them when calibrating the small HD. In fact, you'll notice I have our C6 colorimeter here on the desk, which also works very well for a highly affordable option. Let's get started. Let's click Find Meter. I'll choose my COM port. You'll notice I have colorimetry research selected for a quick find, and we'll hit search. The CR100 has been found, and now we'll find our meter again for the CR300. Now that we've connected to our CR300, we'll want to connect Calman with the small HD monitor. To do so, let's go into the menu. Navigate over to Calibration, navigate down to New Calibration, select New Calibration. You're going to have some instructions giving you an overview. Click Next. Now you'll notice there's Calman Calibration. We're going to select Calman Calibration and you're going to see the IP address. We're going to take this IP address and enter it into our IP address window in the workflow. You'll notice we have the source connected and Calman is now connecting to it as a display. Now that we have our Calman connected to the small HD as both a test pattern generator and a display, we're going to continue through the wizard and the workflow in order to make sure the targets match. Now it's important to note that if you're working with a small HD monitor can handle the P3 gamut, the recommended method is to calibrate to P3 both in Calman and the small HD monitor. If you have a monitor that can't quite hit the P3 gamut, you may want to target Rec 709 or BT 709 as many call it. Let's navigate through the menu system. DCI P3 recommended. Color space DCI P3, white point D65, EOTF 2.4. We're going to hit accept calibration target. In Calman, we're going to check for D65P3, D65, power 2.4. We're going to leave this in PC range as the internal power generator is going to operate in PC range. And the Delta E formula is currently Delta E2000. If you'd like to go to Delta EITP, you can change that here. The calibration may take slightly longer, but you may find you get better results near black. Now that we have the small HD monitor and Calman in D65P3, power 2.4, with PC level 0 to 255 and we're in Delta E2000, we're ready to move on to the next step. On your small HD monitor, press proceed with calibration. A LUT is going to be loaded into the display for the calibration process and at this point it's great to profile your meter if you want to do a meter profile. So we're going to take our CR300 and CR100. We're going to get these as close to center as we can given the situation we're in for the demo. Now during this calibration process, we are in a studio. We do have a lot of ambient light in here and a lot of bright lights coming on us. We're walking through the calibration process. It may not be quite as perfect as we'd like because of the ambient light, but we're going to do the best we can to teach you to walk through it. 
Let's hit meter profile. So we've got our reference meter, the CR300. We've got our target meter, the CR100. We've got our meter synced to 120 hertz. We have the meter set to user mode, and we're going to come down here to, to profile. We're going to add a profile. We're going to rename this to CR300 small HD. We'll add the profile. And now we're going to do the four color matrix method because this is an RGB OLED. And since we have the CR300 and the CR100 both on the screen at the same time, we'll do a single pass. Hit OK. Cowman is putting up the internal pattern inside the small HD, making a reading with both meters, and then creating the profile so that we have the accuracy of the CR300, but the speed of the CR100. Okay, our meter profile has been made, and as you'll see in the top of the Kalman colorimeter section, you'll see we have the CR300 small HD profile. Let's hit done, and now we'll go to our next step by clicking next in the bottom right hand corner. Our next step here is to take a pre-cal measurement to see how the small HD is performing. So we'll hit read series, or at the top we can hit measure. Okay, now that we've performed our pre-calibration, we can actually see that the EOTF is tracking very well. The grayscale is not very far off, but we do have some color gamut tracking issues. So we'll hit the next button and we'll move on to our next step. Now we're suggesting a lightning lot calibration. So in order to do this, we're going to hit the auto cal. We've got our pattern delay set at two seconds, which is recommended by the workflow for any delays. Lightning LED is selected, we're in full range, and now we're going to hit OK. Calman is going to put up a pattern, take a reading, and create a calibration LUT in order to hit our target. And now, Calman is calculating the correction LUT and updating it to the small HD. Okay, as you can see, the Aurora Color Engine has completed the calibration successfully. Calibration took 9 minutes and 47 seconds and went through a total reads of 101. What OK? The AutoCal now has a checkbox as it's been completed. We'll hit next. Now we're on our post-cal measure. Press verify LUT in the small HD to display to minimize the validation. Just want to go here to the small HD. We'll hit verify. Verify LUT. Wait for the menu to go away. And let's hit measure. All right, our post calibration results have completed. As you can see, the grayscale has significantly improved, the EOTF is excellent, and the color gamut mapping has improved significantly as well. Now, let's press next. Let's do our color checker validation. We'll hit measure at the top. Okay, as you can see, the color checker validation is finished. We're getting a max delta E of 0.8 with an average of 0.3. And again, we're in a brightly lit studio, not the most perfect environment, but the calibration has still come out excellent. Let's press next, and now we can do our saturation sweep validation. Hit measure. As you can see, our saturation sweep measurements have finished and we've received excellent results. Let's press next. Here, we'll want to go back to our small HD, hit done, hit begin to set our white level. Now we're going to measure in Calman, and our white level is 312.358 nits. We'll say it's 312 nits. Enter in your value here and click next. And now we get calibration data on the small HD monitor, and we're going to hit save calibration. 
Here, we can navigate back to our input source, which is our virtual forge running from the Blackmagic over SDI, and we can move on to the external pattern generator validation. Click Next in Calman. We'll click Connect External Pattern Generator. We'll select SpectraCal, Virtual Forge, find it, hit Connect, and now Calman is connected back to the Virtual Forge. We have our window size set to the preferred 10% for the OLED. And before we measure, we'll want to change our color pipe on the small HD to DCI-P3. We'll go back into the menu, come back over to settings, navigate to color pipe, select color pipe, select the input that you're on, here on line SDI-1, and change it from Rec. 709 to DCI-P3. We'll back back out of the menu and select SDI-1 again. Click Next on Calman. It's important to note that before I do my post calibration measurement here, my virtual forge is actually outputting narrow range or video range signal. Therefore, I'm going to have to change Calman back from full range to video range or narrow range in order to perform the measurement. We'll go up to the gear icon, come down to luminance levels, and change it back to video. Once video levels have been selected, we can hit read all or measure and see how our post calibration came out. All right, as we can see, our post calibration measure matches our internal pattern generator. We'll press next. Now we have a post calibration color checker. We can hit measure. And as you can see, the post calibration color checker also matches the internal pattern generator. We'll hit next. And we'll do a final saturation sweep. Okay, and once again, the saturation sweeps are matching the internal test pattern generator. We'll click next. And now our calibration is complete and we can either start a new calibration or save and view a report. There is one more thing though that we should discuss. If you're interested in working with the jet offset, which is a white point offset or alternative white point for the monitor, you're able to go into the menu, come over to settings, go down to calibration, select calibration, arrow down to jet offset, and you can toggle that on or off. And the monitor will apply the jet offset to the calibration we just did at T65. No need to redo your calibration. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, please visit portrait.com.